Hi, I'm Nancy O'Neill. What does aging gracefully mean to you? Well, it means something different to everyone. No matter what age you may be, Aging Gracefully on Suncoast FYI offers advice that could help you live a healthier life. Each week we hear from a variety of specialists on a wide range of subjects. So please join us for Aging Gracefully on Suncoast FYI. Dr. Sessa joins us today to go over the Brazilian butt lifts and who can benefit from such a procedure. Hi, doctor. Welcome. Nice to see you again. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to be back. Yeah. So can you tell us what a Brazilian butt lift is? Sure. Yeah, it's a fancy name for um, just basically taking, uh, doing a large uh, liposuction procedure and creating great contours uh, and injecting that fat to plump up uh, people's bottoms. Now, where um, do you get the fat from? Yeah, so um, all over. So the main reason why we do this procedure mm -hmm. is to help with the contour on the backside. Mm -hmm. Everyone's always concerned with the front, but this procedure gained a lot of popularity in South America. South America. Brazil. Brazil especially, <laughs> of course, is they're infatuated with the aesthetic of the of the buttock. Uh -huh. So, you know, the the aesthetic of a of a beautiful bottom, uh, if you will, is round, sort of slightly wide, of course lifted. Um, but the thing that's important is it comes in at the waist. Mm -hmm. So you need in order to get that sort of hourglass figure, most people are shaped very square, mm -hmm. a very square shape. So this procedure is performed in order to remove the fat in the waist, specifically in the back, to create that nice sort of hourglass point. And then as you come out towards the hips and the, the, the bottom, everything sort of rounds out. And the thighs and legs sort of aid as pillars to that bottom. And, um, you know, this is a very common procedure that's performed these days uh, because uh, they've gotten very, very popular because of people like Kim Kardashian and mm -hmm. some of the other stars that sure. are out there, Nicki Minaj. Um, so, you know, they all have these sort of voluptuous bottoms mm -hmm. and it's gotten a lot of attention. And in the last five years, it's seen an explosion in the popularity of this type of procedure. But it's a great procedure because it's lipo. So you're getting this permanent result from rem removing the fat and contours. And then, of course, enhancing the contour of your bottom. So you have multi, multi benefits from yeah. this. I mean, yeah. I think it sounds like a home run, actually. Yeah, it's, it's super high satisfaction yeah. rate with, with patients that are motivated to do this sort of procedure. Mm -hmm. And um, age range on this, can anyone have it done? Yeah, I've done it on 25 year olds, I've done it on 70 year olds. So it really depends on where you are. A lot of people are like, you know, I had my children, and I've always had a flat bottom. I've always had these love handles. I want to, you know, I want to fit into my jeans. You know, I want to have a voluptuous bottom. Mm -hmm. It's a great procedure. Yeah. And how long does this something like this take? Because you have it done in your your facility. Oh yeah, in your yeah. Clinic. This is purely outpatient for, uh, procedure to be performed. Um, Generally, it takes uh, an hour to three hours, depending on the volume of fat that's going to be removed and injected. Um, but um, generally, you know, three, four days of some mild soreness when you mm -hmm. sit down. Right, exactly. But there are certain things that you could do, like leaning forward, certain pillows you could use, certain orthotic things to help with that. Um, but generally, about a week or so of some mild soreness in your bottom. Um, and then generally everything sort of contracts from the lipo over the course of six weeks or so. Mm -hmm. Now with any type of fat procedure where you're transferring fat and moving volumes around, you always lose a little bit of that. Probably generally about 40% of the fat just sort of dissolves, gets, uh, your body breaks it down and, and it, it loses its vascularity and, and, uh, and your body just uh, absorbs it mm -hmm. and metabolizes it. But um, that's a very, very small percentage and generally, we usually over bulk by 15 to 20 percent to correct for that. Anticipating that. that. Yeah. Um, so when when somebody again goes home, like you said, the, the sitting down situation. I mean, is it uncomfortable to sit? Can they sit? I mean, what what's that kind of feel like? Yeah. 
So, um, you know, from what I've understand uh, from my patients, because I see them very regularly mm -hmm. after the procedure, um, a lot of them are, tend to stand quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but when they do sit down, I tell them don't lean back. Mm -hmm. So lean forward, sit on the backs of your thighs rather than your actual bottom. Um, because it'll be uncomfortable. Just the pressure sure. of it will be uncomfortable. But um, it's extraordinarily well tolerated. Uh, very, very low risk of complications with this type of surgery. It's very safe. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Now, um, this is our, our last time seeing you for, for this season. Is there anything that you would like to share with our viewers before we wrap it up? Oh, no, it's been great. I, I, I always like to come on and sort of educate. I used, I used to do a lot of seminars at my office, and um, I have loads of videos on YouTube mm -hmm. where I'm just sort of sitting in front of a camera talking yeah. about pictures. And um, I just enjoy this sort of thing because I think that once people are educated about these things, it sort of loses its, just like anything, right? Once you learn about something, you're not fearful of it as much. So um, it's a great joy for me to do these sorts of things. Yeah, well, I've, I've been on your website many times and um, I've looked at the videos and seen the results and they're amazing. Well, thanks. Absolutely amazing. So it's been a real pleasure having you with Thank us. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Please stay tuned. Aging Gracefully on Suncoast FYI will return after a short break. Toya Crutchfield returns this week to talk more about her outpatient physical therapy clinic, Therapeutic Lifestyle Solutions. Welcome back, Toya. Thank you, Nancy. It's wonderful to be here again. So today we're going to, as you say, wrap up kind of what we've been talking about for the last sev several weeks. Yes. So tell our viewers what sets your Therapeutic Lifestyle Solution Center apart from others. Our clinic is a very unique clinic mm -hmm. in that we're very much patient oriented. We're all about the patient. Oftentimes in outpatient settings, because of the way that insurance dictates care for most of us in healthcare nowadays, it becomes more of a, a business, obviously, um, worrying about the claims being processed mm -hmm. and, and all of that. For us, of course we're a business, of course we have those same concerns. Absolutely. But more than anything else, it's about giving the patient a center that they enjoy coming to, mm -hmm. that they can feel relaxed and, and be assured that everything, every concern they have, every problem they have will be addressed. And it's all about how their care can take them to the very next level, not just um, move them in, move them out kind of thing like right. you see in a lot of centers. No, I mean, you're, you're very, you become, you know, very close to your patients. Absolutely. I mean, you, you want them to succeed because if they're not happy, you're not happy and they're going to not tell their friends exactly. to come and see you, right? Exactly. So <clears throat> you've got a lot of things that you do there. What is most unique, would you say, about therapeutic care solutions? Therapeutic Lifestyle Solutions Thank really you. is um, the uniqueness, I think, is, is within all of us. Mm -hmm. Everybody that's a staff member there. Everything that we've put together are tools that will give a, a patient the clinical outcomes that they're looking for. And we're constantly reassessing that to make sure that the patient is meeting their goals. Because at the end of the day, like you said a minute ago, that's really all that matters, mm -hmm. you know, that a person is able to meet their goals and return to their life. Uh, you know, it, we like to think that our patients start as a patient, but they leave as a friend, mm -hmm. and they leave as someone able to return to their prior level of function. Okay. Now, how do you establish um, a, a clinical plan for each patient? That's a really great question. A clinical plan of care is probably one of the most important elements of getting a person involved in physical therapy. Mm -hmm. So when a person knows that they need to come for physical therapy, either their doctor has uh, referred them for physical therapy or they've had experience with physical therapy before and know, they know that you know it can be something that can help them meet their goals, mm -hmm. they 
have to come in mm -hmm. for either a free assessment that we do in the beginning to make sure that they're appropriate for our program mm -hmm. because as you know in everything we've talked about in yeah. all the segments we have very specialized programs right. but we're also a clinic that can deal with you know your basic orthopedic and neurological issues but when they come in we do what's called an initial evaluation mm -hmm. and that initial evaluation is something that I personally spend anywhere from an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes doing because it's so important for me to completely understand what is going on with that patient and so often in healthcare now as you know you may get five minutes with your doctor yeah. you may get 20 minutes with your therapist yeah. or you're immediately turned over to another staff member within the clinic mm -hmm. um, that's another thing that sets us apart we don't do it that way mm -hmm. um, I make sure that I completely understand what's going on with them everything to do with their past medical history that is pertinent to their current situation mm -hmm. um, oftentimes patients just need someone to listen to them, right. you know and to really feel that the person is compassionate enough to do whatever it takes yeah. to um, help them meet their goals it's their therapy yeah. we're yeah. just there to help you know right. help them provide the tools that they need the education that they need I think you and I've talked before I'm very big on education because if you don't understand mm -hmm. all of these fancy tests that you've had and the results of those mm -hmm. you know you hear these big words you don't really understand what's going on it's very difficult for you to really do your part because you have responsibility as well the patient will always have a responsibility in, in getting themselves better and meeting their goals and that's again it comes down to commu communication I mean, it. you're going to sit with them. If I feel rushed when I come in to see you, I'm going to forget possibly what I wanted to ask you. Exactly. I'm not going to feel comfortable like asking mm -hmm. you things, feeling that, oh my gosh, I, I'm taking up too much of your time. And that's totally the wrong way to feel. And I Absolutely. know you don't make your, mm -hmm. your patients feel like that. And again, you want to know what they need from you right in order to right. be able to help them right so often too you know when people are going through um, all kinds of different issues that may bring them in for physical therapy they don't realize our body's a chain so sure. anything that goes wrong within that chain is going to affect everything else right. so ultimately someone that may come in with a knee issue may also be someone who is very limited with their back or their mm -hmm. hips. So if you don't address that whole person, mm -hmm. not just that knee, you're gonna miss the boat. Okay, now how do you measure the success once they've come in? And do, uh, as they're going along in their treatment, do you tell them, that, you know, you've got so much more percentage of what you did when you came in? I mean, how, how do you give them, you know, the the confidence to see that they're going forward? that's so important also um, you know as you're going along in life in physical therapy mm -hmm. and whatever the case may be the validation of knowing that you're doing the things that you need to do mm -hmm. is so important the first thing I ask a patient when they come back after every treatment is how did you do after your last treatment yeah. it's so important to understand how that patient responds because mm -hmm. there's a million things we can give them to sure. do a million things we can do within the clinic but you need to know how that patient is responding so as they're responding well and they're feeling better you're looking at their pain levels you're looking at their mm -hmm. functional status how much that's changing you're constantly discussing that mm -hmm. with them uh, and then we Medicare also makes us do a, a progress note every 10th visit okay. which is so important too okay so how does one person become phys be, begin physical therapy with you to begin physical therapy mm -hmm. uh, in any outpatient center you're you're going to need at some point a doctor's order sure. uh, next week my front office manager Jamison Brown who's very much an expert in this whole thing and Wonderful. that's where it starts mm -hmm. he's going to come in he's going to discuss that in great detail with you awesome well thank you again thank and i you. look forward to uh, speaking with jameson next week thank you i can't wait either thank you. Dr. Jessica Lippum returns today to discuss the Chinese medical model and how it can relate to the treatment of different issues. Welcome back, doctor. Thank Thanks, you. Nancy. Thank you. Good to be today, here. Today, we're going to talk about a little bit of um, how, 
how to detoxify is mm -hmm. that is that a good way to put it I sure. know that there's so much in the world that is just kind of really m messing with us internally what is the best thing that we can do as a human species to detoxify? Mm -hmm. Of course, drink water is my first. <laughs> of course, of course. Half your body weight in ounces of water. Half your body weight. Not Half your body weight in ounces okay. of water, and coffee doesn't count. Okay, so not the eight glasses that we've grown up with well, hearing. Half your body weight. Eight times eight is sixty-four. So if you are one hundred and twenty-eight to thirty-two pounds, that would work fine for you. Okay. But if you do weigh more than that, your body requirement to flush yes. those toxins is more. Okay. All right. So that's a good way to start. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Secondly, yes. Um, more new to my clinic actually, but not new um, information, maybe only about 10 to 15 years new mm -hmm. is this information. I don't know if you ever heard of anything called the MTHFR defect. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a gene test. Okay. And um, I think I hopped on the boat a little late, actually. I mm -hmm. just brought the methyl detox profile into my clinic, and it's basically testing through uh, just a, a, a very simple, again, under two minute test where you swab the inside of the cheek. Mm -hmm. So it's a gene test. Mm -hmm. And what we're testing is the top five detox pathways. And we're finding that 70 to 80% of the population has one of these five pathways that is not functioning. Okay, only one of five or sometimes you find more than Oftentimes one? Oftentimes more than one. Okay. I've run about 45 of these tests since August beginning with my own mm -hmm. and um, I would say the average is two to three of the gene abnormalities and once you identify them you use very simple nutrients to help upregulate those pathways and have them flow. Okay. Um, so it's a really simple answer but you can't just throw these supplements into everybody's world willy-nilly without knowing whether they need it or not because okay. it could further bog the system. Okay, so it's as simple as simple. It's as simple as finding out, taking a supplement. Yes, I would guide you depending on the results that came through, okay. uh, what was important. And how long would it take for you to notice a difference? I mean, Within do we a week. know whether we're toxic? I mean, is it because we feel, I mean, a lot of people feel fatigue or, um, an overall crummy what, feeling yeah, or just yeah. I don't feel my best and a right. lot of that has to do with how the bloodstream is just carrying this toxic burden. Mm -hmm. um, it's counterintuitive to think that now we're finding that our gene lines have ab abnormalities in detoxifying when we are in fact living in a more toxic world. Mm -hmm. But it's the truth and the first way that you can go about finding out how to age more gracefully, yes. of course, yes. if we can identify how we're not detoxing and fix those pathways to be open and flowing, right. then right. Um, for some people it's as quick as two days they feel different. Mm -hmm. You know, certain people that potentially have things that are measurable, say like body odor, that's a good example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They turn these pathways on with the nutrients and all of a sudden they don't have that body odor because they're detoxifying. Okay. The body's not overflowing. Okay. This so, particular test also, yeah. sorry to interrupt, no, 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 no. is uh, definitely linked with uh, cardiovascular disease, respiratory disease like COPD, mm -hmm. um, asthmas, also linked with mood disorders. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the people that are on antidepressants, on anti-anxietals, it could just be the fact that their body's not detoxing and it's overloaded. And so once we ID oh. this, we can actually begin to even get them off medications. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm sorry, did you say high blood pressure as well? Absolutely, cardiovascular. Okay. Cardiovascular, yep. high blood yep. pressure Long, things. Uh, lots of uh, autoimmune diseases, things mm -hmm. that are, you know, if you look at it from just the inflammatory perspective, it's it's all of the ways that the cup fills up, but the body doesn't know how to, to keep get caught up yeah. and get to rid of it. That. Okay. Now, um, what kind of relationship have you seen in gene abnormalities. Is this kind of tying in with what we're talking about? As far as aging gracefully? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, I have some patients I've tested at age 17, and that's a lovely thing to know at age 17. Yeah. Remember, this is a gene test, so the person yeah. that I'm testing at 70, they've had 70 whole years of filling up mm. their cup and not necessarily 
um, detoxing well, so then other organ functions start to fall out. And sure. of course, the skin and how we look on the surface is always a good measure of mm -hmm. how well you're detoxing. Mm -hmm. The more acne or inflammatory or ruddy kind of looks to the face, mm -hmm. the less well we're doing on the inside. Okay. Now, I know you mentioned um, mood disorders uh, mm -hmm. in, in conjunction with the, the detoxification, mm -hmm. but acupuncture can also help with this, correct? Absolutely. Okay. Acupuncture and Chinese herbs. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, it seems as if we know about acupuncture in the country. We're a little less comfortable about Chinese herbs, and we really mm -hmm. don't have any idea about Qigong. It's a Which meditative <laughs> martial art. It's okay. a meditative martial art. And if you look at the history of Chinese medicine, yes. the order of importance of those three things uh -huh. goes Qigong first, Chinese herbs second, and acupuncture last. What is Qigong like? Qigong is a meditative martial art, so mm -hmm. we are doing stretches, integrating the breath and body work and using specific poses that are four to five thousand years old mm -hmm. based on opening up the channels. So oftentimes if we can open the surface, mm -hmm. it will allow the tributaries that address organ function to also open whatever okay. stagnations are there. And this is something that you also offer? I do. I've been okay. teaching I think now for 15 years. Wow. Okay. Um, I have a practice on my own mm -hmm. and um, we either meet at the office mm -hmm. or we meet out at Arlington Park and the classes are about an hour long. Lovely. Okay. But back to the mood disorders. Yes. The um, Qigong, of course, is extremely important yes. and I try to integrate that with all my patients that we're treating for mood disorders. But I would say that Chinese herbs are the number one tool that I have to help people mm -hmm. regulate whatever's out of balance mm -hmm. and or get off medications if they're not liking mm -hmm. the side effects of medications or they've hit a plateau with medications. Okay. Now when you're talking about medications and introducing Chinese herbs, mm -hmm. because a lot of times people will be skeptical about taking a Chinese herb because they don't know how it's going to interact with the medicines that they're currently taking. Right. Is that something that you also go over with them? I do. I, I address it very simply. Okay. When those Chinese herbs come over into the country, whether they're encapsulated or tablet or fresh herb, mm -hmm. they enter as food. And so we are not told to not eat certain foods when we take medications. So it's almost as if I'm making you a salad of root barks and flower tops. Okay. And great. so there will be no interaction. All right. And mm -hmm. finally, Chinese herbs have been around for thousands of years. Up to 5,000 recorded. And our medicines today have been around? Maybe 125 in diapers. So there you go. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to be said for that. Absolutely. In and of itself. Well, thank you again for being here, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Nancy. Great. Thank you for tuning in to Aging Gracefully on Suncoast FYI. To find previous episodes, go to snntv.com under programming. See you next Saturday and Sunday at noon.